Um, in this example, first thing, let's just practice our rational zero test. Plus or minus the factors of our constant over plus or minus our factors of our colliding coefficient, which is just 1. So really, that one's, this one's not bad. Plus or minus 4, comma, plus or minus 2, comma, plus or minus 1. That means my real rational answers, whatever they are, has to be in this list. And that's really all the rational zero test is telling us. It's just telling us what the possible uh, or what, what our rational zeros will be, or possible rational zero. This doesn't tell us what the answers are. It's just saying whatever real rational answers we have is going to come from that list. Yes? Coefficient. That's the degree. Oh, coefficient is one front. Okay, well, the degree is more than the unit. So Doesn't matter. Zeros. Yes. But there's only three options. No, there's six plus and minus. Oh. So you have six possible. But again, hold on. Another thing to remember, though, which you will talk actually with this one, that just means four zeros. It doesn't mean they have to remember what you talked about imaginary? Yeah. They can be imaginary. This is only telling you the real rational. Okay. So you could have imaginary, you could also have square roots, which would be irrational. So you have more options, not just these. Um, anyways, I asked you guys to uh, graph this. And if you guys went ahead and graphed this, you guys would have found a 0 of anybody? 2 and negative 1. Let's just use 2 to start off. So again, major mistake a lot of students made, again, was they, there was no x squared, and they didn't put the place value in there. Remember, guys, this will trip up everybody on synthetic division, because you don't have an x squared. So you have to rewrite this. These are equivalent, correct? Because what's 0 times x squared? It's just 0, right? It it's not a, these are the same. But you have to have your exponents going in descending order, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, all the way down. But we don't write x to the 0, because that's just 1. And we don't really write x to the 1, because that's just x. But just make sure you have every single one covered. And if you don't, use 0 as that place value. Does that make sense? OK, now we just do our synthetic division. 1 is 2. OK, so I get this. Now, I, this is a factor, right? This is really remainder, constant, quadrat or linear, uh, quadratic, cubic. So this is x cubed plus x squared plus 2x plus 2. Now, is this factorable? Yes, yes it is, right? However, let's just pretend it's not factorable, OK? Because you guys could easily factor this. You already know 1, 0. You guys could factor this. I just showed you how to factor that. But let's pretend it's not factorable. How else could we figure this out? We already know what 1, 0 is. We know what the other 0 is, right? Which is negative 1. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do synthetic division twice. So I'm going to take the other 0. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to synthetically divide the quotient. So I basically take the answer, put it in another synthetic division, and now I do synthetic division with my other 0 that I found by graphing. That's why using your graphing calculator can be helpful. The problem's simple enough where you could have factored it. But I want to show you guys what happens when you can't factor them, what you would want to do. So you bring down the 1. 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. 0, 0, 2, negative 2, 0. So a remainder, constant, quadrat, uh, linear, quadratic. So now I know that x, um, x minus 2, if that's my 0, then that's my factor, right? Is everybody kind of OK with me just writing it like that kind of quickly? And then that means x plus 1 is a factor. And then I have x squared plus 2 as my other factor, x squared plus 2. And it says find all the zeros. So we set equal to 0, so we know x equals 2, x equals negative 1. x squared plus 2 equals 0. Uh-oh, this is going to cause a problem. Subtract 2, subtract 2. x squared equals negative 2. Square root, square root. Can we take square root of negative 2? Not in the real number system, but in the imaginary number system, we can obtain plus or minus i square root of 2. i represents imaginary solutions, right? But that's OK, because now do we have four zeros? 1, 2, 3, 4. 4. So we're, we're covered. And then also, are these two in my rational zeros? Yes. This would not be in there, because that's not real. That's imaginary. 
right? So it wouldn't be in the rational zero test. So I just want you guys to know you can 